Okay, first I want to start by sending a big thank you to Mr. Joe Malovich for hating the audio quality in my videos so much that he sent me an external mic. Uh, I got it the other day and I really like the thing. It does not, however, work with my phone. I'm working on a way to try to figure that out. It works great with my GoPros though, so and that's what I like to use outside more often than not. I'm definitely going to get a lot of use out of it. Thank you very much. Everybody else, I'm going to put a link to his channel down in the description. He has a lot of really great videos, very fascinating stuff. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing, it's definitely worth sifting through his, uh, through his uploads. Okay, this is our rotor. This is uh, the, the third part of our, our conversion. We're going to start setting this thing up for magnets today. Now, if you wanted to get the most out of this this motor in general, you're going to start from scratch. You're going to have a new shaft made, you're going to have uh, a new rotor made, and you're going to press as much magnet material onto it as absolutely possible. Um, second best step is going to be cutting heavy slots into this, and again, squeezing as much magnet material as you possibly can onto this rotor. Uh, going either way, you're going to require uh, either machining abilities or you're going to have to know a machinist who can hook you up or you're going to pay quite a bit to have you know someone make this stuff for you. So what we are doing instead, I, what I want to focus on is doing this in a way that anybody can do it. Uh, and we're going to use these. These are M52 grade <coughs> neodymium magnets. And what we're going to do is we're going to get at least a hundred of the things pressed on here in small bores. Just like so. And we're going to try and stick with the sloped pattern because if there is any cogging, it'll help with it. Although I figure this thing is going to be big enough that if it does cog, it's not going to matter much. There we go. We're going to cram as many of these magnets on here as we possibly can. Uh, we can do that's four core, uh, four yeah, four pole motor, which means that we need four sets of these magnets all the way around, a north, south, north, south, and ideally, we just cover the whole surface with them. Uh, I don't really have enough magnets for that. I think I I miscalculated a little. I thought I'd only be able to put 24 magnets per pole, and it uh, turns out that I could put uh, 28. Oh, well. So, we're going to do 24 magnets per pole, which will be four rows. Let's we'll see how wide that'll be. All right, so basically we're gonna have this whole grid area just like this, filled with these magnets, and there's going to be four sets of them. This is not going to be the most ideal way to get the maximum amount of power out of this motor. What it's gonna be is a way that anybody with a drill can get something out of it. And uh, the motor's big enough that I'm willing to bet that the, uh, the output would be surprising. So we'll see. Okay now step one is always making sure that whichever drill bit you're using that it's actually going to create you know, that your magnets are going to fit. So we're going to test it out on a block of wood. And believe me you always want a hole that goes all the way through because 
After you test fit it, you need to be able to get the magnets out. Now, generally precision is the best way to go, but for this particular project, we are, uh, we're gonna go with whatever fits. The goal here is not extracting the most power possible out of this rotor. If we wanted to do that, the only way to really go about it is to use a custom rotor, big magnets, so forth. Like I said, what we're wanting to shoot for here is something that anybody with a drill can do. And now something to keep in mind. These rotors, they're made out of laminate, very thin laminations. And uh, whenever they start cutting, they cut pretty fast and sloppy. Just something to be prepared for. Just in the spirit of things, I'm even gonna eyeball it. Okay, now I'm using a drill press. This drill press, it has a gauge on the side where it'll tell me how far down I've bored. And what we're wanting to do, the, these magnets are a quarter inch thick. We want the surface of the magnet to be flush with the surface of the laminations. So we want to go down a quarter of an inch. Now, almost every drill bit out there has got a point, it tapers. And you're gonna have to, you know, overcome that. With my drill press, I are, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a, a test here that just gets me right past the, the taper on the end. And then from there, I'm gonna use my gauge on the side to mark how far down a quarter inch is. That way, I should be pretty flush on the sides. It'll be a little bit deeper in the very middle, but on the sides, it should be flush. This is big enough that it won't matter a whole lot, but, you know, the curvature, it'll get me pretty close. If you don't have a drill press, this is something that you should be able to do with, with a hand drill, but you'll need to get something to mark your depth because you want them, if nothing else, to be uniform. So, away we go. And this stuff, the way it cuts, it's soft, and it leaves little burrs all around it. Make sure my depth's where I want it to be. Okay, and from there, I want to go a quarter inch deeper. going to be flush on the sides. It'll be just a touch deeper across the middle, but on the sides, it's going to be flush with the surface of this stuff, the laminations. All right. One down, 95 to go. I'm sure everybody out there who has any machining experience whatsoever is, you know, kind of shaking their fingers at me because we're not 
We're not doing anything special here. We're doing this mostly eyeballing things. Uh, you know, it's not going to be the most precise setup. But again, the whole idea here, anybody with a drill should be able to do this. Now, this my first run here was mostly exploratory. I wanted to see how many I could comfortably get in a row. I uh, started on a, on a sixth one on the end, but it just tried to walk off of all these laminations. So we're not going to worry about six. We're going to do five in a row, and then they're going to be staggered. You're going to have these five here, and then the next row is going to start here. And it's gonna, you know, zigzag a little bit. Also, doing five. You now I got a hundred magnets, four pole motor. I might be able to put, you know, four sets of twenty-five. We're gonna take a look at this. We started on this one. Might not be able to get 25. I don't know, maybe. Okay, so the next run is here. And then 15, 20, 25. That puts it on that line. Maybe. I'll have to do some math. If we do 25, just drilling 100 holes, this thing will be, there will be no blanks in between poles, which will be, that'll be good. All right, so 95 more holes to drill. That's 100 holes. And I'm tired. I am gonna be annoyed whenever I come out and see this in the morning. And I was not wrong. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can definitely see things that annoy me now that didn't annoy me last night. <laughs> And the first set of holes I did, this one, they all look neat, spaced out. This one's the second, not so much. This one looks like I didn't care at all. This one, I've got a run of six holes. It's supposed to be five by five. I got six and more or less for, I don't know. Okay, well, in the end, this was not meant to be the most efficient or best way to do this. It was meant to be a way that anybody can do it. If you're drilling these out by hand, you're gonna make mistakes. There's gonna be some problems. Uh, so I guess that just makes it a little bit true to the experiment. Uh, <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. The next video will be cleaning it up, 
getting all the grease and oil off of it, uh, getting the magnets fixed, setting it in the cage. We'll see what it does. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. You'll get updates. And uh, thanks for watching.